floodplains. Floodplains is that flat area between the elevated areas of the river. And here's the next question, or a test question. Why are floodplains so desirable? Why? Why is it hard to do? You would do that. I, I need the why. Okay, the why is so important. Yeah, but why? Okay, so why are the floodplains richer? There you go. Okay, so here we go. Remember on the previous slide we talked about carrying capacity? The faster water is flowing, the more it can carry. Okay, so if you're in a flood, that river is flowing really, really fast. It's eroding a lot of materials from upriver. And those materials tend to be in nutrients. It's in the soil. So it's not that it makes the soil wet. Okay, I'm just gonna see that one on the test. Not because it puts more water in the soil. Okay, it's because of the nutrients in the soil that's being transported downriver in suspension. Now, think about a hose. Put your thumb over a hose, and when is the water stream? It speeds up, and it goes farther, right? Okay. Take your thumb off, what happens? It goes back to slow. Okay. What you're really doing with a river is the same concept. You are restricting space that it has to flow in, and it's equal areas and equal time. Make sure you make that connection. Equal area and equal time. Therefore, the amount of water being discharged in this amount of area has to be equal to the amount of water coming in. Equal in, equal out. Well, if I flood my riverbanks and actually flood out, I now have a wider area. Therefore, I can discharge more water but in a short amount of time, right? So therefore, where is my velocity? And when taking your thumb off the hose, as soon as you open up that area, what happens to the velocity of the water? It slows down. And what we just talked about before, as you now roll onto the floodplains, I've decreased my velocity. What happens to all those materials held in suspension? They go <coughs> the suspension and get deposited. And that's how we get rich floodplains. Okay? And you see more entertainment about what's going on around you than the content being. No, go ahead. Yes. So basically, what here? All right. So five version. Okay. As it's flooding, the river is holding the nutrients and other sediments in suspension. But as it floods, it loses <coughs> property, and therefore those sediments fall out of suspension. Get deposited in the floodplains. Now, one of the um, neat things, I don't think you guys really can understand, but if you ever travel to downtown Fort Wayne, you'll, you'll notice this. You're probably definitely noticing now, I'm going to point out to you. You guys ever heard of like, the 50 year floodplain, mm -hmm. a 10 year floodplain? Have right? you guys heard of those before? Okay. You see the, the hills right here? Those are actually natural levees built by the river. And maybe not so much, those are a little tall for that. But the river banks are created by successive floods. And what typically happens with a river is you get this stair step effect. And we call these terraces. And what these are, are your natural levees that are built by the river. That over time, as the river floods, it leaves this mound of junk behind, okay? Um, after a really heavy rainstorm, a lot of ponds will flood and run up on the banks. And as that water recedes, what's left behind? It's like that ring of junk, right? It's like leaving the ring the, around the tub. You guys know what I'm talking about? You have all this debris all around the pond. 
it's the same thing with the river. As the river floods, it's going to leave this pile of stuff. And so that builds up after successive floods, one after another. So the higher you go, that's the 100 year flood. And so you actually, if you go into Fort Wayne, you actually think about the next time you go, go downtown, feel for this. You actually will feel yourself drop several times as you're moving into downtown. Because the very downtown is right there at the river's edge. <coughs> so as you move away, you're going to come up, you'll hit a little flat area, you come up a little bit more, you hit some more flat, and you come up again. So that's some of the major rivers, you will see that natural stair step effect. There's, I think that's all I had for uh, oh. uh. <coughs> All right, so some cool images. So right here, you can see a little bit of erosion. You can see how it kind of traces its way back through the field. So we can start where you might have had a little bit of water down cutting right here in the front, and then it slowly down cuts back. Very similar to what's going on with Niagara Falls today. We'll see that later on. And we have, this is actually out of Madagascar, where the entire bedrock's all limestone. And then so when it rains, it literally cuts these very, very, this is like 300 feet deep. So right down here at the very bottom. And these are just really razor thin, sharp spires of rock. You can actually walk down through here and snake your way through this entire region. It's pretty neat. Every time I see this image, I swear this guy's a doctor. That just does not look right. What? But either way, you can still see the erosion of. But uh, it's kind of like people who build their homes on top of the bluffs on the Pacific Ocean. I never feel bad for them when I watch their house fall down the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Common sense tells you that's about to happen. It might happen 20 years from now, but I guarantee you your house will end up in the water. <laughs> what happens if Think Gary, about it. What happens if Gary turns back into a swamp? That would take a lot. Well, what happens if it does? That would take a lot. Okay, last thing I want to show you guys here is how waterfalls work. Think about Niagara Falls. Remember we talked about this working its way back up the field? You'll see that it come out here, and the down cuts, breaks in the rock, and then the Niagara Falls slowly cuts back. Right? And I think if we watch the episode of Niagara Falls, I think it talked about the fact that it had actually cut back um, about since the beginning of the 18th century. So, All right, so that concludes that. Mr. Thomas speaking. Hi.